I went to see the criminals who run Cuba face justice. But it's dangerous to say the words. Castro is responsible for this miserable situation. My name is Rosa Maria Payan, and I am a freedom fighter. I was born in Havana in 1989, in the middle of communist oppression. I remember my childhood as a happy time, actually. My parents always would work to keep our life as normal as they could. That environment made me feel secure in a way and protected. That reality, I now understand, made us underestimate them. You know that the evil is there. You know about the death threats, but you don't actually believe that it's going to happen to you. That was the difference between my understanding and my father's understanding. My father is Oswaldo Payan, a leader of the opposition against the Cuban communist regime. When Fidel Castro got to power in 1959, they just behaved like a mafia, like criminals empowered. They abolished civil liberties and said, we don't have to make elections because everybody loves us, so we don't have to prove that. Anyone with an alternative expression to the communist ideas was the subject of persecution. People that had long hair or that were gay or religious ended up in forced labor camps, put in jail or killed. Communists mutilate the human soul in order to be able to control the society. Today it's hard to imagine, but the oppression hasn't ended. My father and I, we had normal arguments that a father has with a teenager girl but the threats of the Cuban state security were always part of the conversation. It's totally different. Every dimension of your life is controlled by another force, different from your will, your feelings, your decisions. For my father, the goal was to transform that reality peacefully into a more democratic system by moving hearts and moving wills. La democracia es para todas las personas y puede que renazca. He created a movement to confront all these sins in the regime that he understood that were bad. I remember people stopping my father just to say thank you or to say hi in the middle of the street, and to do it publicly. That's something that you don't do in a totalitarian regime. He had such a big love that was enough to be shared with the entire Cuban people. The campaign get stronger and stronger and stronger, and then our car started to be followed by state security agents with walkie-talkies. My father was very aware of the danger around us, but I had that illusion that my father was protected by his public image, by the international community, by all the work he was doing. That was not the reality. The Castro brothers, they had other plans for him. July 22nd, 2012, my father left to campaign for the opposition. Eight hours later, my mother got a test message. There has been a crash. Volunteers from the campaign said a car hit them from behind and 
help. We are surrounded by the military, the state security. We are doing anything in their power to prevent us access to what has happened to my father. This was an orchestrated attack. The police was everywhere persecuting us. Finally, we learned that my father was dead. He was killed by the Cuban regime. When we arrived at the funeral, there was a huge crowd there. The people came together with a lot of sadness, but also this feeling of pride for my father. All the movement was there, all the opposition was there. My mother was broken, but she was very strong. El amor sin límites a Cuba de Osvaldo. I was thinking this is not enough. We have to do more, we have to say more. I asked for time to speak. Sobre la violenta muerte de mi papá. I talk about his trust in the Cuban people and his certainty for Cuban liberation. And then I put on the Cuban government the responsibility for the death of my father. And the people start to clap. And start to scream freedom and liberty. They knew they were being watched, that the state security was there. It was a moment of unity. I miss my father every day of my life. But I'm sure he's looking after me and after all those that are following and fighting on the same path that he opened for us. There is nothing worse they can do to me. What that they can do is take our bodies, but they cannot silence us. Leadership is a consequence of what I do. We're going to work and we're going to transform Cuba. Cuba.